Hello, I'm Miss Laura with the Wichita Falls Arts Council, and today we're going to create a net drawing. Uh, we'll need two sheets of paper, one for a practice drawing and one for a final drawing. Um, a pencil and a permanent marker or just a regular marker or even a pen, something that doesn't erase. Here's an example of a finished net drawing that's been colored in. So you can see these different fibers or noodles are woven in and out of each other, or I guess underneath and over each other. Um, if we were to look at this lime green noodle, it goes underneath the yellow, then over the blue, under the green, over the orange, and then under the yellow. So we're going to keep to a couple steps or rules um, that we'll establish in our practice drawing. And then using those rules, you'll be able to create these woven lines. Okay. So this is what the practice drawing will look like at the very end of it. We're doing four small drawings and they'll be pretty similar. And then on the second sheet of paper, after we're done with our practice drawing, um, you can create your own composition. So the first thing I need to do is to take my first sheet of paper. I'm going to start by folding it in half. Doesn't matter which way you fold it in half because you're going to fold it in half again. So you can start by folding it in half hamburger style and then hamburger style again, or you can even fold it in half hot dog style. And then I guess it's a hamburger. Um, either way, the results are the same. What we want to do is create four different sections on our white piece of paper um, for our four miniature practice drawings. We're going to start in the first little section here in this top left corner, and we'll start by creating this first practice drawing. And it, I think it kind of looks like two roads, one traveling underneath and then one traveling over. And because we're doing these two roads, we'll need to start off with two guidelines. And we'll draw these guidelines with a pencil because we need to erase later. I'm gonna zoom in to this top left corner here and draw my guidelines. So I want one guideline traveling vertically or up and down and the other one traveling horizontally. I only need one guideline for each of the roads. So I'm going to start with my vertical road and using my finger as a unit of measurement, I'm going to do one vertical line about the height of my finger. This will be the guideline for my road traveling vertically. And then I'm going to draw across it a horizontal line. It'll be the guideline for my horizontal road. Once I have my pencil guidelines in place, I'm going to grab my permanent marker, or regular marker, or pen. And I'm sandwiching in all of my pencil guidelines in between two marker lines. Making sure not to cross over my pencil line or get too close. I'm trying to stay about the same distance away from my pencil line on either side. Once I'm finished drawing on either side of all of my pencil lines, again, without getting too close to any of the lines or crossing over them, um, I now get to make a decision of where I want, or I guess which road I want to travel on top. If I want this vertical road to be on top of this horizontal road, then I can just connect these two vertical lines together in the middle here, right here, and right here with my permanent marker. 
My second option is to connect both of these horizontal lines so that the horizontal road travels on top and the vertical travels underneath it. So with your marker, you get to make a decision whether you want your vertical road to travel on top or the horizontal road. Then you can choose either. But you do have to connect either both of the horizontal or both of the vertical. You can't do one of each. So I've chosen to connect the horizontal lines, the lines going across. So then now it looks like my horizontal road is traveling over my vertical road. You can erase the pencil when you're done. It has served its purpose as a guideline and we no longer need it. I'm going to move on to drawing number two in this top right corner section. Um, and we're going to start by drawing our guidelines. The drawing will look like this, where we have one long horizontal road and then um, it being crossed by two vertical roads. And it's traveling over one and then underneath the other. So we're going to have our road start to weave. So we have one road here and then two roads going vertically. So we have a total of three roads, meaning we need a total of three pencil guidelines. So I'll start by drawing my road going across or horizontally. And using a pencil, I'll draw my line going across and then it will be crossed by two vertical lines. It looks like a double plus sign. Plus signs holding hands. Okay. Once my guidelines are in place, I do the same thing that I did before, where I sandwich it in between permanent marker lines, taking care not to get too close to any of the pencil lines, and making sure there's a marker line on either side of all of my pencil guidelines. And I'm trying to stay about the same distance from the pencil at every point. Once you're done sandwiching in all of your pencil guidelines with marker lines, um, you get to make a decision at each of these intersections. So that is the same decision that we made with our first drawing over here. Um, it's whether to connect the both vertical lines or both horizontal lines. Whichever you choose to do at this first intersection, you'll just do the opposite at the second to give the appearance of weaving. So if I were to connect these two horizontal lines in one of two options at this first intersection, then I'm going to do the opposite at the second one. Because I connected horizontally here, I'll connect vertically here. Okay, so now I have this horizontal road going over and then under my vertical roads. If you chose to connect both vertical lines at this first intersection, then you would connect the horizontal road at the second one. Whatever you do at the first, you're doing the opposite at the second, and then you can erase your pencil. We're gonna move into our third little quadrant here. And in this quadrant, we're going to draw four intersecting lines. Um, meaning that we'll need four pencil guidelines. So I'm going to start with two vertical lines.
And then I'll cross them with two horizontal lines. It looks like a hashtag or a tic-tac-toe. Set up or pound sign. Okay. And I'll do the exact same thing that I've been doing, which is sandwiching in all of these pencil lines with marker lines. Once you're finished drawing on either side of all of your pencil lines with marker, um, now you get to make some decisions at these intersections. We have four points where our roads cross. So we get to decide which lines travel on top. So I'm gonna start by choosing one and picking a direction. So I'm left with the same choice, either connecting these two vertical lines or connecting these two horizontal lines. I'm just going to randomly choose to connect the vertical ones. And I'm going to move in a clockwise manner here and I'll just alternate between these intersections, whether to connect the vertical lines or the horizontal lines. So moving clockwise, I've just connected the vertical lines, so now I'll connect the horizontal lines. Then alternating for the next one, just did horizontal, now do vertical, and then horizontal to finish it up. Okay, now we have four lines that are sort of woven on top of each other. In the last quadrant, we'll do a drawing very similar to our last one, um, but this time we're going to try to use curving lines. So instead of straight lines, like we've done for the past three practice drawings, um, we'll do four lines, two horizontal and two vertical that cross them, um, but they'll be slightly wavy or curvy. Uh, the curvature of your lines do not have to match mine. Um, the only point is that you draw four lines total, two vertical, two horizontal that are not straight lines. So we'll start with two vertical, and then move to two horizontal. Okay, so they're just wavy lines that cross over each other. I'm going to repeat the same step that I did for the past three practice drawings, and that is to sandwich in all of my pencil guidelines with marker, but this time because my lines aren't straight, I'm really paying attention to the curvature of these lines and trying to keep the same distance from the lines with my marker on either side. Okay. Once you're done, you can make a decision at each of these intersection, intersections, anywhere where our pencil guidelines cross over each other. So you're connecting either the vertical lines or the horizontal lines, and you're paying attention to the curvature of how those lines meet too. So I'm going to start 
by just choosing a direction and then alternating a little lumpy that's okay and then for these ones i like to just sort of round off the ends make them into worms Once you've finished your four practice drawings, you can move on to your second sheet of paper and create your own composition. And you'll do the exact same thing that we did for the practice drawings by drawing pencil guidelines. And then sandwiching them in between marker lines in progress there we go so here's an in progress drawing where we have all of these pencil guidelines extending from the top of the page and then going down across the paper and then some horizontal wavy lines and then sandwiching them in between marker lines and then at the very end making decisions at those intersections where to connect, whether to connect the two vertical lines or whether to connect the two horizontal lines. So here's a finished drawing where those decisions were made. Um, either the vertical lines were connected or the horizontal lines. Um, here's one that was just colored in with a colored pencil. This one is just a pile of worms, so a little more free form, but each worm is just a guideline. So they're shorter lines that cross each other, but they don't extend to the edges of the paper um, like the net does. These are entire lines that start at the top, end at the bottom, or start at the left side and then end up at the right. But if you want to do free floating lines that cross over each other and are simple and you can even round off the edges, then you can do that too. Or you can even do a combination of both. Okay. So I'm going to start another drawing like this, do a full net using the entirety of my paper, and I'm going to start at the top of my page and draw some wavy vertical lines going all the way down. You can decide how many lines you want to go up and down or across. Okay, I've done a few wavy vertical lines. Now I'll draw some wavy horizontal lines. And then now comes the sandwiching part with a permanent marker. So I'm doing just what we did in the practice drawing. And then when I'm done sandwiching in all of my pencil guidelines, then I can make decisions at each of those intersections.
Okay, when I'm connecting at each of these intersections, I'm just going to alternate between them. So vertical here, horizontal here, then vertical, horizontal. And then for the next line, I'll see whatever one is next to it here. So I just did vertical up here, so I'll do horizontal here. So it's always different from the one next to it. That gives the appearance that it's, you know, woven in and out or under and over. Um, if you feel compelled to connect only the vertical lines and you just have these vertical tubes that are sitting over horizontal ones, then you can make that decision. Okay, I can erase my pencil lines now and color it in. Um, if you are coloring in, I do recommend trying to keep each of these single noodles the same color, um, kind of like this one here. It helps the illusion that it's actually traveling and it's the same line um, as it emerges from under some of these different colors. Like this green one here, it goes under the yellow. Um, so it starts out green, and then as it passes underneath this yellow noodle, it stays green. It's continuously green all the way to the end of the page. If you want to do some color changing lines, that's up to you, but I think this sort of helps the effect. Thank you and bye-bye.